4.45 at last check uh, after yesterday's big sell-off. Joining us to talk about some of the volatility in crude, John Hoffmeister, former CEO of U.S. Operations at Shell Oil, founder of Citizens for Affordable Energy out of Houston. John, good to see you again. Hi, Carl. Uh, big debate yesterday over whether or not this was about worries about global economic activity, worries about Europe, and simply the need to have some cash going into year end. Which was it? Well, I think it's probably a combination. You know, the, the, it's like a seesaw going back and forth on a child's playground, where on a given day, the supply-demand relationship could tip one way or the other. I think the con lack of confidence in the European solution, uh, which we saw last week, is not going down well in the markets. I think the fear of European recession is growing, and if that happens, then I think the demand destruction will set in. But on the other hand, we have the, the issue in the U.S., where it's been very warm through December, and, and, and November was quite warm. So heating oil and natural gas, I think, are a bit soft because of the lack of a real winter season so far. And just any combination can set the market one way or another. Yeah. We're going to be with vol volatility. I think it's going to be around for a while. You've made some pretty prescient calls in the past few, I mean, far out, uh, three, six, nine months in terms of crude. Is your worry about oil going much higher or much lower? My biggest worry is that we will see oil prices continuing to climb into triple digits, 110, 115, 120. I'm talking West Texas now, not Brent. And I, and I think that the issue will be what it's, where's the supply coming from? When you look at the China demand over the next three to four years, you look at India, you look at the rest of the developing world, global growth in the range of four to five percent, if we can achieve that, and there's no reason we shouldn't achieve that, if we play our, play our cards right, we're not going to be able to keep up. So my concern is with the high price of oil holding global expansion back, which means we need to up the supply side. Yeah, more straws in the ground. Uh, and I guess we got some leases auctioned off in New Orleans. That's a first step. Does Iran and war games in the Straits of Hormuz, is that material to price or not? Well, I, I think that that will add to the volatility of the seesaw on any given day. And so, yes, when there's a rumor, unfounded or not, it can have an immediate effect. But I think that will be self-correcting when, when things calm down, down a little bit. But, but let's be clear. Geopolitical uncertainty in the Middle East will be a factor for some time to come. Egypt isn't settled, Libya is not settled, Syria anything but, and then you have the Iranians who can be a wild card on any given day. So that's why you know I keep coming back to the supply side and how do we continue to have development where the U.S. is less dependent on the volatility of the Middle East. Well, it's kind of hard to get that infrastructure going, John. Things like pipelines in this country, anyway, when they're attached to things unrelated, like a payroll tax extension. You're, you're exactly right, Carl. We play politics with energy time, and guess who pays the price of that? The average consumer. Keep in mind, this year, 2011, consumers in the United States of America will have paid the highest price for liquid fuels in the history of the nation, all because of the politics of energy, shutting down the Gulf of Mexico, playing games with the Keystone Pipeline for personal, you know, political reasons. And we've got to get politics out of energy if we're ever going to have an energy future in this country. And I'm still a big believer and will always be that revitalizing the energy system in the 21st century could be a tide that lifts all ships in this economy if we could get the politics out of it. John, we'll see, uh, we'll see if we hit triple digits anytime soon. Uh, it's good to talk to you, though, as always. Thanks for the guidance. Thank you. John Hoffmeister in Houston.